Hi and welcome to this new video of Deep Dark Ross. In this video I'm going to um, go over the five most um, strange things, very simple but basic issues that people that we come from Ross 1 we will have probably sometime in Ross 2. So before we continue uh, I would like to remind you that we have our fourth Ross Developers Day. Uh, you can register and uh, it's the last week. So next week, June 19th, we have the, the Ross Developers Day. So I hope to see you there then. And without further ado, let's get started. So let me go here. So as always, I've loaded a Ross check. And I'm going to go over the the main issues, the five most basic issues that ROS1 users will have sometime in their life when they start using ROS2. First one is Qualcomm Build. So as you know, um, with ROS1 we have ROS Build and Catkin Make, but in ROS2 we don't use that at all we use Qualcomm Build. And one issue that I had at the start is when I did a change, so when I when I did a change in my packages in ROS1, like for example, let's say I'm here and I go to my ROS2 workspace and I change something inside my, my box bot description. I don't know, the URDFs, the colors, whatever. Um, Anything that I change here in ROS1, when I relaunch the launch, it will reflect that change, okay? I don't have to compile anything. In ROS2, by default, it doesn't work that, like that. So let me explain. So when you go here and we go to um, ROS2, ROS2 workspace, you can see here that we have several folders. One is the install. In ROS1, we didn't have this, or at least not by default. Uh, we could uh, configure it so that we had an install, but normally we worked with our, our devil, our build, and nothing else. In ROS2, what we are doing is compiling everything, like always, but also we are copying the folders, the packages, everything into this install folder. And the things that we execute, so if we do a ROS run, if we do a ROS2 launch, we execute the things that are inside here in the install. That means that if I change something in the source folder, it won't reflect at all. And this makes issues like, hey, I've changed this and I executed and it didn't change what's happening here. Did it compile wrong? Uh, did I do something wrong? Well, the thing is, if you do Qualcomm build, that's it. You have to build each time that you do a change in a file, which is a pain in the neck. So how can we solve it? Whereas it's not it's a very basic solution and it's a solution that it's um, thought by the ROS2 developers so it's not something that I've invented at all which is using this command Qualcomm build and this argument which is simlink install so when we do that what we're doing is doing a, a soft link to the files that means that everything that we change in one place it's going to be changed in another, in, in the install. And that way we don't have to compile each time. So that's, that's really important. So let me just remove a build and install and log. Okay. And then what I suggest here, which it helped me a lot, is to add an alias in your bash RC so that you just execute this command and it does the following it goes to the workspace it builds doing symlink and then it sources and it will 
it will help you a lot. At least, at least it helped me a lot um, saving some time, tedious time doing all the time writing this code. So if I go here and I do, normally you have to do uh, source of bash rc if you did the change. And then I do a ROS2 build. Then it goes to the ROS workspace and it compiles using the symlink and then oh I did a change uh, I did a mistake here so let me just bash rc uh, 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 uh. okay there we go uh, setup setup dot bash let me do it again uh, Measure C and um, ROS to build. There we go. So now, in theory, I I should be able to do ROS to launch um, box bot uh, gazebo. It's auto completed. So yeah. So there we go. So it's finding things. Perfect. That's it. So this is one thing that is it's really important to bear in mind. Otherwise, it it gives issues and problems which we don't want. OK, next one is Colcon CD. So now in in ROS2, we don't have our beloved ROS CD. What we have to use is Colcon CD, but by default, it's not enabled. That means that you can't do Colcon CD command whenever you want. Uh, for that, you have to add this bash RC, this this lines in bash RC, and then you can do Colcon uh, CD, and then, for example, let me say uh, this one description, and there you go. So we have our ROS CD, ROS2 version. Yep, very convenient. Then, uh, this one, I didn't know about it, and it's quite useful, actually. So in ROS1, we had ROS1, but in ROS2, we have ROS2 doctor, which is this command. If you execute this command by itself without anything running, what it will do is go over all your setup of the system and see anything that it's running there that shouldn't be running or uh, has some issue or something like that. In my case, I had things running. So apart from that, so we have everything here. It's telling me that I don't have my packages updated, basically. And here, what it's saying is all the connections of the topics, which ones are not connected, so which publishers don't have subscribers and which subscribers um, doesn't have any publisher for that topic. For example, in my case, we don't have any publisher for boxbot command build. That means that I've executed something wrong, for example, here, or I don't, I haven't executed. So if I do this, for example, now in theory, I have someone that is publishing there. That means that if I, um, let me run this again, ROS2 doctor, we can see that um, there are some things that don't have, so publisher without subscriber, but we don't have this command veil doesn't have anyone's publishing. Why? Because I have this one that I've executed right now and it's it's publishing. So it's a very good tool to know which topics are connected to who. It could have some issues like um, you, you had some publishing but now it's not publishing so maybe there are some issues uh, still that you have to take into account. But it's a good tool 
at least to have a, a first idea. Okay, so next one, ROS core. In ROS1, we had ROS core. In ROS2, we don't. That means that, for example, I can close everything. So I can close my simulation, I can close everything. There we go, we don't have anything. But if I execute a ROS run, which in ROS1, we couldn't do that without a ROS core. Here, it does it. So I have a publisher for Boxbot Commandville, and that's it. I don't need it. Then this is an. This also is in ROS2 for viewing the TFs. This is the command to to generate the the PDF for the TFs. So if I launch my simulation. Uh, let me look. There we go. So uh, we have our beloved box spot here. And I go here. I execute it. There we go. And now in my IDE, I can download this, open it, and we have our TFs. So this is something that I also didn't know where it was on or how to find it. So there you go. And finally, these two, which this one gave me headaches at start because I didn't understand. So launch files now are Python files. That means that in theory, you should write them like this. My, my invisible Py, let's say. But if you write it like that, so without the launch here, extension, it won't be found. Let me, let me show you. So we are going to go um, Colcon CD um, box spot, um, box spot description. Unfortunately, it doesn't autocomplete like Rossity, which it's, it's a shame. Um, so now if we go to launch folder and we do something like this. Okay, so we have two files which are basically identical, empty. Um, if we then do a ROS to build If I do ROS to launch a box spot description and I double tab, as you can see, we can see the my visible launch.py, but I can't see my invisible uh, .py. Why? Because I didn't add this launch. You have to put this extension, otherwise it doesn't find them. I don't know why. I don't know why if they are Python files, they are treated differently because they are launch files in the launch folder. But that's the way that it is. If you know it, please leave it in the comments below. But basically you have to put this extension to be able to find your launch files. And as an extra, uh, when we are remapping in ROS2 now, this um, formula is deprecated, so we have to add this ROS args remap command vel blah blah blah. And that's, for example, the one I did here for uh, the command vel to move the robot, so that's how it's done now. Deprecated means that probably in the next um, long term version of ROS2, it won't be supported anymore. And that's it. So it's been a short video, but I hope that these tips and tricks will allow you to progress in your ROS2 learning faster. And that's it. Thanks. Please subscribe. Please leave a thumbs up if you like the video and comment on any questions or doubts that you might have on ROS2 or ROS1 or Gazebo, whatever you want. And that's it.
Thanks and see you in the next video. Peace.